And now we have Shaman. This tiny little hedgehog looking thing has been one of the most adorable Pokemon of all time ever since its introduction in the fourth generation, where it was obtainable through various events, like the one at Toys R Us. It also had one of the better Pokemon movies in which it ran from the terrifying Giratina and showed off its new sky form. And if there was a competition for cutest Pokemon ever, Shaman would undoubtedly land a placement in the top five. But today we're going to examine how Shaman was able to perform in the competitive scene. So we ask, how good was Shaman actually? And in this video, we'll be going over these competitive formats. Shaman was a great Pokemon in its debut generation. It had a terrific defensive profile in its resistant late and grass typing, combined with a base 100 HP, defense, and special defense. It was also solid offensively with its 100 speed being the gold standard for the fourth generation. While its terrific 100 special attack was complemented by crucial coverage and earth power bulky leech seed variants to bypass hidden power coverage issues and toy with walls too bulky to break through, namely Blissey, and of course dangerous stab in its signature move, Seed Flare, whose 40% chance to drop special defense made it even more difficult to deal with. For example, specially defensive Skarmory could take Hidden Power Fire fairly well, but if it switched in on a Seed Flare and suffered a Spadef drop, it was in trouble. It wasn't easy to passively wear Shaman down either. It had Natural Cure to shrug off status and could even effectively use Rest to fully heal up and switch out, able to come back in at full health later. This allowed it to make great use of Life Orb while circumventing the downside of its recoil. It could also run Leftovers as even even on all-out offensive sets, it still posed a threat while improving survivability and being able to make the most out of its defensive capabilities. Now, as mentioned before, Shaman did have coverage issues, as it had to choose between HP, Fire, and Ice, and thus miss out on Flying and Steel types respectively, and this was nothing to be taken lightly. This didn't stop it from being a good Pokemon, but it wasn't used too often in OU. So it dropped to UU, and it was a great Pokemon there, but we'll get to that later. As for now, we have to shift our attention to the release of Pokemon Platinum and the addition of Shaman's new form, Shaman Sky, which was simply incredible. Sure, Skyman, as it was referred to, was a lot frailer, with an added flying typing that gave it a stealth rock weakness and a quadruple ice weakness, while both base defense stats were lowered to 75. However, on the offensive side, it was a menace and a half. Its base special attack was boosted to a powerful 120, and its base speed rose to an astonishing 127, making it the second fastest OU Pokemon, behind Aerodactyl and Jolteon. It also received Stab on Air Slash, courtesy of its newfound flying typing, expanding its coverage even more. The Cherim on the cake, however, was receiving Serene Grace as an ability. This made its Stab attacks a terrifying combination. Seed Flare now had an 80% chance of harshly dropping the opponent's special defense, making it even more difficult to wall, and Air Slash had a 60% chance of flinching the opponent. This meant even the mighty Blissey couldn't handle it all reliably. Four attack variants using Earth Power to smash the Heatran and rising in usage in response to Skyman were incredibly potent, but they weren't the only thing Skyman could do. It made the most out of Air Slash with Choice Scarf, making it the true fastest thing in OU. HP Ice made it an excellent Dragon Dance Salamence Revenge Killer, and it wouldn't be getting outpaced by Scarf Heatran. Air Slash was also nearly unfair on a substitute Leech Seed set, letting it stall just about everything in sight, as grass types like Celebi couldn't safely block Leech Seed thanks to Skyman's brutal, super effective stab Air Slash. Skyman didn't even necessarily necessarily crumple to opposing attacks either. Despite its lowered defenses, it still had a base 100 HP, which also allowed it to conjure up 101 HP substitutes in the face of Seismic Toss. Mamoswine and its Ice Shard were among the many things that rose in an attempt to slow Skyman down, but none of them could stop it from effortlessly rampaging through the OU metagame. With its immense speed, immense power, and serene grace abuse that made Jirachi look like nothing, Shaman Sky was banned to Ubers, not too long into Platinum. And we'll return turn to how it did in Ubers, but for now we're going back to regular Shaman in Platinum UU. There it was an amazing Pokemon. It sliced through offensive teams using HP Rock to drop any Moltres or Yanmega, and it wasn't easy to out offense it thanks to its great speed and bulk. It was incredibly difficult to wall Shaman too. Stahl absolutely hated dealing with it since it leech seeded all over Chansey while natural curing Toxic away. It was almost too good not to use. It improved pretty much every team it was placed on, and eventually it was decided to be too much for the tier, and it 
was banished to BL. And at first, I wasn't used in OU much, but that didn't last. Latias, which walled even HP Ice Shaman hard, was banned, and Shaman started rising in usage. Of course, it was still held back by the presence of Salamence, who was the biggest consequence of Shaman not running HP Ice. The catch-22 was that it needed HP Fire to not be useless against the number one Pokemon in the metagame, the U-turn spamming Choice Band Scizor. However, Salamence was banned not too long after, and Shaman shot up like a rocket, establishing itself as a true OU Pokemon off the strength of its Life Orb set, performing well against the newly Fire, Water, Grass, Core centric metagame, since Heatran almost never ran Choice Scarf anymore. Shaman was also strong against the rise of Electric types in response to Latias leaving. The coverage choice between HP Fire and Ice was still there, but it wasn't nearly as devastating anymore. It usually preferred Fire to Thwart Fortress and Skarmory, and giving a free switch to Dragonite wasn't nearly as bad as giving one to Salamence due to its lower power and speed. Although going with HP Ice wasn't a bad choice, as Choice Band Scizor usage had dropped off a cliff with two of its biggest targets now banned, meaning there was a significantly lower chance of it coming in and threatening a U-turn. Time went on and Shaman showed no signs of being a passive trend. It was an OU to stay. It even started toying with two different sets that allowed it to fulfill more roles and fit on more teams as a result. The first was the Leech Seed Protect set. The combination of these two moves wore down the opponent while keeping Shaman healthy in one fell swoop, and was especially nasty alongside spikes and or toxic spikes to make it difficult to attempt to switch around Leech Seed. It didn't need them though, as it was incredibly irritating even with simply Stealth Rock. The Leech Protect combo with Rocks Up wore down Heat Rant switch ins incredibly quickly, making up for the coverage move Shaman had to drop, usually Earth Power as it wanted one of HP Fire or Ice, so it wasn't walled by opposing Grass types. It usually stuck with Fire as it was important to wear down the Sand Immune Steel types like Skarmory and Jirachi in conjunction with Leech Seed. HP Ice's main targets in Zapdos and Dragonite were Stealth Rock weak, while Gliscor and Flygon were maimed by Seed Flare, so it was a worthwhile trade-off. Leech variants also irritated Stall like little else, healing up on Blissey much like it did against Chansey in Yu Yu, and even coming with the benefit of healing up teammates. For example, a Water type or Tyranitar switching into Heatran would appreciate the bit of recovery in shrugging off the assault they had taken switching in. This was particularly useful when switching into Blissey due to its huge HP stat. Infernape, for example, could heal a lot and offset Seismic Toss and Hazard damage. Finally, Leech variants were excellent because their longevity allowed Shaman to effectively perform the roles of a defensive Grass type. In particular, its ability to stand in the way of dangerous offensive Water types in Suicune, Kingdra, and Gyarados, whose bounce was blocked by Protect, brought a lot of utility to its team. The second set that Shaman developed during its time as an OU staple was Choice Scarf, a la Skyman. With its power, bulk, and speed, it was a solid revenge killer to speed boosting threats, namely Dragon Dance Gyarados, Dragon Dance Tyranitar, Dragon Dance Dragonite, and Agility and Napoleon. Late game, it cleaned defensive teams up hard. It wasn't useless against Stall either. Air Slash was useless on it, so it traded it in for Healing Wish, which could revive a worn down teammate, for example. A Life Orb recoil racked Infernape or Dragonite for a second rampage through a battered Stall team that had just barely managed to withstand its first assault. Now, Shaman did experience some severe roadblocks later on. It was hurt by the rise of Clefable Stall, as it completely ignored any and all passive damage, including Leech Seed, while avoiding the two-hit KO from even a Life Orb Seed Flare, whose low PP and occasionally frustrating accuracy made aiming for a drop unreliable. Plus, Shaman needed to lead off with Seed Flare if it wanted even a chance at breaking through Clef. Clefable's teammates such as Skarmory, Jirachi, or Bronzong could take advantage of this by switching into and shrugging off the Seed Flare before drawing an HP Fire for Clefable to switch into safely. It was an uphill battle for Shaman, so most players didn't bother. The rise in Toxic Spikes from Clefable's ever-present partner Needle Queen didn't help matters either. The Choice Scar set remained solid as it was never supposed to break through defensive teams to begin with. But then Latias was unbanned, and as a healing wish using Scarfer, it outclassed Shaman hard. Since it struggled to accomplish much, Shaman fell out of usage, but it was down, not out. Trap teams with Jug Trio and Magnezone and offensive teams that spammed water types rose in usage. They were solid choices, that is, until they ran into Leech Protect Shaman. It dominated them as much as a Pokemon can dominate a single team. It switched into them with ease, and they could barely switch into it in return, and usually could couldn't force it out or even damage it too much at all. While Shaman was no longer as easy to use once Clefable had joined the tier, it didn't cease to be a great Pokemon in DPP OU, as it had been for so long prior. Its role simply changed. Being able to so utterly destroy some of the metagame's newer, most dangerous styles of teams meant it would always have a solid role in the tier. Plus, Clefable itself was not immovable. If chipped heavily by Choice Band Tyranitar Pursuit, or lured in and KO'd by something like Magma Storm Explosion Heatran, Shaman could easily remind teams why it was once feared. Now to wrap things up, let's
let's revisit Shaman Sky this time in Ubers. So, how did it fare? Well, the emphasis on dragons and steels meant it wasn't as dominant as an OU, but it was still an excellent Pokemon. Its mighty Seed Flare cut through Groudon and Kyogre like nothing, and its high speed meant it was one of the fastest Pokemon in the tier, outrunning even Darkrai. It mainly used a Subseed set, which allowed it to break through Pokemon that could otherwise withstand its attacks, such as Dialga, Ho-Oh, Lugia, and Soldu Latias, and there was no other grass types in Ubers, meaning Leech Seed was landing without fail, accuracy notwithstanding. Its Choice Scarf variant was also an excellent late game cleaner, as it mowed down Mewtwo, one of the few Pokemon naturally faster than it, and other common Scarfers in Garchomp, Palkia, and Kyogre. Any Skyman sets fast flinch happy Air Slash had an obnoxious tendency to get its user out of a sticky situation. All in all, Skyman was a terrific Pokemon in DPP Uber, capping off a great generation for itself and its landform alike. Generation 5 began with several former Ubers dropping into OU, Skymin among them, and history was made. It wasn't that Skymin was immediately banned for being too fast, too strong, and too good an abuser of Serene Grace. It was that it was so despised that not a single person voted for it to stay in the tier. Absolutely everyone wanted it gone. And usually even cases that seem incredibly obvious have a few dissenters. So it speaks to just how universally infuriating Skyman's air slash antics were. We'll cover its return to Ubers later, as now we shift our attention back to Landform Shaman. Unfortunately for it, OU was out of its wheelhouse by now, with the huge emphasis on fast, powerful threats like Latios and Terrakion that Shaman stood no chance against, as well as Ferrothorn, who was neutral to Earth power and had its fire weakness neutered by rain. It it was used a few times, but it was generally outdone by Celebi, who packed Nasty Plot, U-Turn, and superior defensive capability. Thus, Shaman dropped to UU, which greatly resembled the OU of the generation prior, and thus fit right in. It was excellent without being overbearing, which was especially impressive given how prominent and powerful fire types were in the tier. It did have competition in the form of Rose Raid, who had Sleep Powder, both forms of spikes, a higher special attack stat, a powerful secondary stat in Sludge Bomb, and it absorbed opposing Toxic Spikes. These are all amazing qualities, but not only was Shaman not outclassed, it was absolutely excellent and arguably more viable than Rose Raid as a whole. Not absorbing Toxic Spikes wasn't a huge deal when it could just team up with other great Pokemon in Needle Queen or Quillfish, meaning it wasn't threatened with one-hit KOs against common attackers, like Mian Xiao, Sharpedo, and Snorlax. This meant it could stay in against them and attack. It also was resistant to ground instead of neutral, meaning it could safely switch in on Earthquake and Earth Powers from Rhyperior and Flygon, instead of being torn apart by them like Roserade. Also unlike Roserade, Shaman both packed Psychic, meaning that it slammed Crobat instead of being walled by it, and was not weak to Psychic, meaning it was not deathly afraid of Mew and Azel. Shaman's Psychic also meant Roserade was not going to be walling it anytime soon. Now, Seed Flare wasn't quite as powerful as Leaf Storm, whereas Leaf Storm's special attack drop made it weaker with each subsequent use, Seed Flare had a good chance of doing the opposite with its special defense drop, meaning it could break through bulky special tanks like Snorlax and Umbreon, as if that wasn't enough, Shaman didn't even have to run a special set. It could run Swords Dance. This set had incredible surprise factor, considering that most players don't even know Shaman learned Swords Dance, and added a whole new dimension of difficulty in playing against it, as it ran through stall without relying on spadef drops. As always, it could shrug off status with Natural Cure, and it was almost impossible to withstand repeated assaults, since most stall Pokemon struggled to hurt it at all. Seed Bomb smacked Snorlax and Umbreon, Zen Headbutt smashed Rose Raid even without a boost while 2 hit KO and Zapdos, Quillfish and Togekiss with a boost. Being a physical super that wasn't stopped by common physical walls like Bulky Waters and Rhyperior was excellent as well. And it wasn't permanently ruined by a potential Scald Burn thanks to Natural Cure. Finally, while Shaman wasn't as relied on to be a defensive presence as it was in the previous generation, its natural bulk and typing was incredibly useful in staving off the tier's many waters, most notably the incredibly dangerous Suicune and Kingdra. All in all, Black and White Yu Yu Shaman was one of the tier's best, most important Pokemon. Now, now on to Skyman and Ubers. There were better Scarfers to be running, but no matter, as its subseat set returned with a vengeance. Its speed became even more useful, as it outran the newly added Arceus by a country mile. Also, outrunning Darkrai was bigger than ever, given how much of a threat Darkrai was with the new sleep mechanics. Of course, Ubers did add two new grass types, but that didn't stop Skyman's Leech Seed antics. The first one, Arceus Grass, 
wanted nothing to do with Skyman's Air Slash. Now the second one, Ferrothorn, seemed like a terrific Skyman stop, as its Leech Seed immunity was compounded by a neutrality to Air Slash. However, that was just it. It was neutral, not resistant. And Skyman could batter it down, especially as it could safely hide behind a sub. Even if Ferrothorn did run Gyro Ball, it only had 8 PP, which was easily stalled out, especially since Skyman could flinch its way to high enough health to create enough subs with which to stall them out itself. Plus, Gyro Ball was much, much rarer than Power Whip alongside Ferrothorn's mainstays of Spikes, Protect, and its own Leech Seed. So most of the time, Ferrothorn wouldn't do anything but set Spikes up against Skyman. Skyman also enjoyed being able to create substitutes from full health as opposed to 75%, as Rain teams now came equipped with the excellent Rain Dish Tentacruel and come Black and White 2, Mold Breaker Excadrill to spin reliably. Tentacruel also laid Toxic Spikes, making Skyman even more terrifying. For example, it could potentially come in on and beat things like Combine Arceus by spamming Substitute until they were forced to recover. At which point, it leached from behind a Substitute and beat them without needing a single Air Slash flinch. While it wouldn't be as free to repeatedly span Sub, Skyman was also terrific on Sand Teams, as the Sand rubbed extra damage into its Leech Seed victims, and it would have the benefit of the amazing Sand Rush Excadrill spinning for it. With Hazard support of its own, Skyman could easily punish any attempts to U-turn or Volt Switch around its Leech Seeds from Pokemon like Genesect and Zekrom, putting the opponent in a lose-lose position. Skyman was not as easy to slap on teams due to its lower defensive utility in comparison to other uber staples, and running into Regenerator Ho-Oh could be a frustrating experience, but for the most part, Skyman was worth the effort and then some. In a metagame filled with Specs, Draco Meteors, and Water Spouts, it still managed to be one of the most terrifying Pokemon to face. The player base learned their lesson, and Skyman wasn't allowed in OU for one minute in Generation 6. We'll go over its adventures in Ubers later. And for now, focus on the land form once again. There was no chance for Shaman in OU this time around. It didn't gain anything new, while the metagame exploded in strength, with Talonflame and Megas everywhere. Matter of fact, Shaman was even nerfed a little, since Hidden Power was now 60 base, as opposed to its previous 70. It dropped to UU, and while it wasn't bad, it wasn't really good either. The metagame was too fast, too strong, and too bulky for it to ever get anywhere. With High Dragon, Infernape, Entei, Crobat, Cura, Mandibuzz, Blissey, Reuniclus, and Mega Aerodactyl everywhere, Shaman just struggled to ever really accomplish much. It didn't help that it had a lot of seriously fierce grass-type competition either. Its main rival Celebi was one of the best Pokemon in the tier, and Rose Raid's Moon Blast resistance and Stab Sludge Bomb made it excellent against the many fairy types running around. Mega Sceptile was a terrifying offensive threat, and those were just the main three. Whimsicott, Rotomo, Chestnut, and Verizian were also solid choices whose own individual traits made them superior to Shaman. Now, that wasn't necessarily a problem, as Shaman dropped to Aryu and was looking really good, until it was realized that it was too good. It absolutely dominated the tier, and it was too fast, too strong, and too bulky. It switched in and ripped through the tier with ease. Switching into it was incredibly difficult, especially with Stealth Rock up, and as a result, it received the ban hammer only a few weeks after it dropped, having to go from reigning over Aryu back to languishing without purpose purpose in RUBL, unable to make any sort of splash in UU. At least Shaman had some brief respite in what was overall a frustratingly forgettable generation for it. Skyman was a little better off in Ubers, but not by much. In XY, it was still a threat. It enjoyed the ubiquity of Defog, which now cleared Stealth Rock for it, and it had plenty of Groudon Kyogre, Arceus Grass, Arceus Ground, and Arceus Water to chase out and get its subseed going against. That said, it didn't care for being so utterly destroyed by Mega Gengar, a problem that would plague it throughout the generation. Then, however, Oras came, and everything became a lot more difficult for Skyman. Groudon went primal and gained partial fire typing, meaning Seed Flare no longer scared it to death. Kyogre also went primal and gained a massive special defense boost, meaning Skyman couldn't even scare it reliably. With its two main targets no longer vulnerable to it, Skyman had a much more difficult time finding opportunities to wreak havoc, especially since the rest of the metagame was more hostile to it than ever. It wasn't going to switch in too easily against teams with Mega Salamence and Xerneas in addition to the Primals. That said, it still had some use on specific hyper-offensive teams, as chewing Subseed in favor of all-out attacking with Life Orb. Its Air Slash could potentially prevent Arceus the Fog, outrunning Darkrai was still massive, and a Healing Wish could rejuvenate a teammate like its user's own Primal, Megamence, Offensive Arceus, or Xerneas. If Skyman managed to prevent an opposing the Fog as it was meant to, Stealth Rock would stay up, and thus its Hidden Power Rock would actually KO Ho-Oh. Despite its niche being smaller than ever before, Skyman managed to retain viability in Oraz Ubers. 
Shaman dropped to RU again in Generation 7, but it wasn't too strong for the tier anymore. This time around, it fit in just fine and became one of the metagame's best Pokemon. It was able to switch in against several of the metagame's best, most common Pokemon, such as Rhyperior, Milotic, and Mega Blastoise, while resisting offensive moves from common threats like Raikou and Zygarde 10%, once it hit the field. As it did often and easily, it would proceed to rip through its switch-ins with Life Orb boosted attacks, alongside potentially devastating Seed Flare spread death drops against would-be special walls like Snorlax, Florges, and Cresselia, while Grass Resist on offensive teams like Metagross, Salazzo, and Noivern had to be wary of its coverage options in Earth Power and Hidden Power Ice. It was an all-around great Pokemon that was able to find opportunities to fire its attacks off with its typing, speed, power, and bulk, with the bulk also coming in handy since it meant it didn't automatically fold to return attacks. Being able to nullify the downsides of and thus being able to comfortably use Life Orb thanks to Synthesis or Rest in conjunction with Natural Cure meant Shaman was an offensive threat that didn't rely on Z Crystals or a Mega Stone. Regarding the former, it didn't need Z moves, but it could potentially run a devastating sweeper Z Celebrate set, obtaining a plus one boost to all its stats and cleaning weakened teams up. The extra speed and bulk made it harder to take out, and while the extra power was self explanatory in letting it cleave through teams, regarding the latter, this was particularly relevant in letting its team run the best Mega in the tier Mega Blastoise. This was something one of Shaman's main competition, Mega Sceptile, couldn't do. Shaman's other competition was fierce, though, as Rosary and especially Verizian were top tier Pokemon, but Shaman didn't just exist alongside them, it thrived. Those other grass types wish they could have the option of healing wishing their teammates or cleaning up weakened teams themselves like Shaman did, with its excellent choice scarf set that, unlike the similarly functioning scarf Gardevoir, did not crumple to pursuit. Overall, Sun and Moon RU Shaman did not dominate the tier, but make no mistake, it was excellent. It used a variety of great sets and strong defensive and offensive utility to establish itself as one of the best Pokemon in the meta game. Skyman did not have it so good in Ubers though. All of its old issues returned, and many new ones arose. Dark Rise, Dark Void was nerfed, making it more or less unviable, and thus being able to outrun it was no longer a big deal. Defogging had never been easier, and thus Regenerator Ho-Oh had never been more difficult to break, especially in conjunction with other long-lived monsters in Zygarde Complete, Lugia, Celesteela, Toxapex, and Magirna. It just wasn't worth trying to break through these ever-present monsters. And that was before Ultra Sun and Moon came out, which added yet another unbreakable Pokemon in Necrozma Duskmane, as well as another Pokemon that outsped and dominated Shaman in Ultra Necrozma. And that's it, so how good was Shaman actually? While well, both its forms have had successful competitive histories. The land form, also known as the more adorable one, or just Shaman, rose to become a cornerstone of its debut generation of OU, in the post-Dragons metagame, after having been too good for Yu While the devilish Sky form, or Skyman, was quickly banned from OU and became a great Pokemon in Ubers. In Gen 5, Shaman couldn't keep up with power crept OU, but became excellent in Yu Conversely, Skyman made history by getting competitive players to agree you unanimously on something, that it did not belong in OU, and it went to make waves in Ubers once again. Both forms stumbled in Generation 6, although Shaman had a brief period of dominance over RU before it was banned, while Skyman managed to find a small niche in Ubers. Sadly, Skyman wasn't able to recover in Gen 7, but Shaman became one of RU's best Pokemon the second time around. Overall, this little hedgehog has had a storied career, and we hope to see it back in Generation 8 if Diamond and Pearl remakes actually come out. Hint hint, Game Freak. Thanks for watching everyone, and as always if you liked the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False Swipe Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content, and in the comments I want to know what do you think about competitive Shaman, would you give something to Skyman to make it go back to being good in Ubers, whatever it is let me know in the comments. Also thank you so much to our patrons for continued support of our videos, and thank you to everyone else watching as well. And follow my crew on these social media platforms. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.